Uh, our next uh, speaker has already appeared in the panel. Uh, Sir Peter Rubin is going to discuss the uh, situation in the UK from the patients, uh, from the doctor's practice. Sir Peter. I've only got uh, two slides for you, um, of which this is the first. Um, what happened with me, uh, I think, is what I've been asked to talk about. So that's this slide, and the next slide is showing where we are with revalidation so far in terms of the, of the number of, of doctors have gone through. So at my um, appraisal, it's important that we clarify the scope of my practice. As we've said earlier, uh, you're revalidated to do what you do, not what you once did. So I bring along evidence about what I do. Then I bring along evidence about how I've been keeping up to date. Now this is where the college's e-portfolios are really, really helpful. And so a um, bit of advice I always give to, to those doctors who claim that um, recording their CPD will be a life's work. Well, actually it's not. Um, and um, if you keep your CPD attendances up to date as you're going along on the e-portfolio, it's, it's quite straightforward. So I brought along evidence that I had met my college's requirements for CPD, but also brought along evidence to my appraisal that I'd actually attended the things I said I'd attended and my reflections on everything that I'd attended and, crucially, how was it relevant to my practice. Um, uh, it, it is no longer possible to go along to CPD sessions that are, that are far removed from what it is you do. Uh, I had to bring along evidence that I had reflected on, on my practice and had audited what I, what I did. There's a huge temptation when you come to audit to, to measure what is measurable, uh, despite the fact that that may, may be irrelevant to, to patient quality, the quality of patient care. Um, I uh, was doing a hypertension clinic, for example, which has the advantage of being quantitative, so you, you, know, you, you can audit the blood pressures at the end and, and the beginning and so on. And the, the fourth aspect of the appraisal uh, was the multi-source feedback, the 360 degree appraisal. Now I could choose some of the people who um, expressed views, but not most of them. Each, each um, organization within the NHS has a slightly different approach at the moment. We've tried not to be too prescriptive at the GMC at this stage. Um, so I did not choose most of the colleagues who responded, but the colleagues who responded would have included um, other consultant physicians, junior medical staff, nurses, secretaries, um, receptionists at my clinic, you know, a whole range of, of, of people giving a view on me. And the key, of course, is to have so many people responding that it's impossible to identify who's saying what. And the responses don't come to me, the responses went to my clinical director. Patient feedback was included as well. Uh, the patients were chosen randomly. Um, and uh, although in a clinic where there's more than one doctor, of course, you've got to make sure it was me that saw the patient. Um, but the patients are, are, are chosen, chosen randomly. And then at my appraisal, or, or a, a week or two before the appraisal, I, I was given the, uh, the average responses on the various um, items on the, on the 360 degree appraisal. So, you know, it, it was as straightforward as, as you, you could make it, and we're trying to make this um, pr pretty simple. We never lose sight of the fact that most doctors are really good doctors, and I think that it's important to always emphasize that. And most of us do this kind of thing, with the, with the exception perhaps of the 360 appraisal, most of us do this kind of thing all the time anyway, because that's the way we are. You know, we're a very competitive, driven bunch of people, aren't we? And we want to stay up to date, we want to stay good. So most of us are doing this anyway. This is formalizing what most of us are doing anyway. My only other slide is the um, numbers related to revalidation through to the end of January. So we began in early December 2012. And uh, although Britain is a very small country, uh, we are very sensitive to the fact that there are four um, administrations within uh, the UK. And so everything I do at the GMC is split into England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. Um, but the, the numbers there, I think, tell uh, an interesting story. These are the number of doctors who have been revalidated. And then uh, defer, these are doctors who 
over whom uh, there ha there's a local concern over their fitness to practice. And these doctors are currently being investigated locally to clarify whether or not it would be appropriate to recommend them for revalidation or whether some other procedures are necessary. And those other procedures could include, at the most extreme end, something is found which is so serious that they're referred to the GMC's fitness to practice processes. Or it could be that something is identified that falls short of that, but remediation is necessary. It could be a health issue that has now been identified as a result of the processes that I described um, earlier on. And then in the, in the and, and we're de deliberately not intervening. I cannot tell you what the reasons for these deferrals are, but de we're deliberately not intervening because that would distort the process. Uh, we're waiting to see what happens locally. Uh, we will ultimately be doing shed loads of research on this, obviously, but not at the moment. And then in the non-engagement line are, people, are doctors who just don't want to know, and they're easy. They will lose the license of practice. That's, that's easy. Um, and so that, in a nutshell, is where we are at the moment. I've kept it deliberately brief, because I said a lot of stuff earlier on. Um, but this, you may well want to ask questions about this when we come to the panel uh, discussion in a minute. Thank you very much. <laughs>